Hello YouTube, Matthew Taylor here. I am going to be doing today a radiator replacement and also a fan replacement. So the symptoms I've actually been experiencing was that my main fan for my Mark V Golf GTI, one edition, or the one package rather, has <clears throat> it works intermittently. I've been noticing a particular fault code in my engine control module for I think it's P0480. Um, that's the generic OBD2 code, but then it'll say lower limit not reached. So this has so this fan will sometimes just not work. It'll work now and then it just stops working. This causes a bit of overheating when the vehicle is left stationary. Um, <clears throat> I think not doing anything. The air conditioning fan does work. So I'm suspecting that the fan needs brushes, which I'd replaced years ago. I replaced that years ago, but it has it's just not working now. I take let's take the opportunity to replace that with another fan that we have available for this purpose. Also, what has happened, what has transpired is that alright, so I had a radiator leak earlier this week in that a split had appeared here I had it had subsequently been sorry a good friend had actually gone and epoxied it for me with some metal epoxy I would love to give a shout out to the brand of metal epoxy I just can't remember right now it was in a black and yellow um, label so that was that I am um, yeah so but I had a car idling last night and as such I totally forgot because I was charging some batteries from my vehicle's main battery this is the time I give a shout out to Everready Gold just because I could get it cheap at Price Mart locally here in Jamaica and as such what happens that because i didn't have this main fan spinning pressure built up busted this so the epoxy has floated off the surface and it's overflowing from the overflow port on the bottle so you know it's some serious good pressure build up inside here but got so what i want to do is so someone had this fan which I'm gonna swap this so this fan this it was in good condition. I'm gonna take this fan was working. I'm gonna take this fan out and put it in my car. Um I'll leave this. This is broken. Yeah, I'll so take this out, put this in my car, and radiate so inside. Unfortunately, radiate inside. Take that out, install that. The method of removal. Is going to be simple. Let me see if I can do this with one hand. So this phone is upside down now. I'm going to simply to take the fan out. Uh, it's, it's I'm trying to yeah. What am I doing yeah? So it's four screws. One, two down below. Two. So it's one, two. I'm kind of doing this, looking at the camera while. Well, Pointing at this, okay, so three. Wait, I'm not pointing at this thing, right? Yeah, three. And then there's a fourth one down below, which is a bit difficult to see. So I'll get my. I'm gonna put in the caption what T Torx bit I actually use for this. Um, so pull those four, slide this up after disconnecting that electrical connector down here where my index finger is pointing to the electrical connector in question would actually be would connect to this there's that little rubber, rubber red tab which you I'm assuming you pull out that way and then you pull that off and you're good so I'll show you what's what in just a moment all right so uh, a couple of steps were how do you say missed no I shouldn't say missed but basic steps so let's do let's do this. So I've had I've removed both fans, um, my original fan and the fan from which I want this motor. I don't need, yeah, I don't need 
yeah so i'm going to swap put this motor in place of this one and the procedure this involves let me show you on this one just pulling these three nuts pull these three nuts the motor and the fan assembly come off just detach that detach that first loosen this detach that off as well pull these three nuts and the motor assembly is then free which i then put on this i just record this portion for those of you who are just simply just doing a fan swap this is what my original fan looks like so fan with um module inside the actual fan itself so how it is is from so the, you have positive and ground that's the brown and red wire um all right of course red is positive but the point i'm getting at is the there's a if you notice the wiring inside here so this fan this motor goes over to this other fan there's a module that the ecm controls and that is how the fans operate now how they were removed from the shroud as it was said before the, the four um screw, uh, screw holes one two yeah one two three and four in my case i should have shown you um one two three and four this one has a has this for whatever reason this is probably for a different uh, vehicle i think i want out of it is just the motor mm. so that no matter and you would have found it bolted onto the radiator which for the radiator i have um pulled off by pulling four screws on it if you can see where let me see if i can looking at the camera all right if you can see where get my index finger oh hold on yeah see if you can see what my index finger is pointing like i'm touching it that hole is what the radiator shooting it yeah this is what the radiator itself bolts onto there are four of these one up top there's another one down the bottom you probably might not see it too well in the camera but it's there and then there is another on on this side of course before doing any form of pulling drain out this by whatever means i had used oh don't mind the miscolored thing i had been mixing coolants in the interim so i'm gonna put in fresh coolant in a bit and don't worry it's it's a vague coolant i'll be putting in and as such with that in mind so i have because mine because this is stuck on there pretty well i have chosen to disconnect this hose instead just to pull this off when i get it off out of the vehicle I'll then properly pull this out the other end is a bit tricky for me as i do not have any way of holding onto it i might have to pull this hose clamp which i put on to that side here which is kind of not easily shown on camera on the video normally a factory procedure would have involved you pulling off the entire front bumper so front grill so front grill removed front bumper removed headlights removed left i mean right and left and this for you to be able to get this off and then you'd pull this whole thing off as a sandwich so for the gti because it's inter um it's intercooled you have the ac condenser up front behind here you can take a sneak peek at it here ac condenser that's this and then you have the intercooler that's right here which you can see the other side off that's this and then you have the radiator and then you have the radiator fans a normal fsi engine would have had just this radiator in the very middle with the ac condenser up front but yeah so this is the design and so this is where i'm going to now continue doing some pulling so i have this loose loose all four bolts pulled just need to slide this up but the problem is i just can't get the other hose connected how i see it being done 
is oh there's some met there's a metal clip this these sir clips let me show you the side the shiny one this sir clip which just goes down like so which clips uh, clamps onto either side that side here that side here it just goes down clamps on it holds that locks that in place but I've subsequently removed that just take a just take anything and just pull up on the side here and you get it out all right and yeah so I'm gonna put on the camera get back to work what I'm working on is getting that side out ignore the noisy car in the background all right so well, the last time I had actually gone through the recording of the video I would have had this loose um, this loose I mean meaning the radiator loose from the intercooler but due to how do you say some technical space constraints with having the other coupling like this on this end in the way I could not get this out freely so what I had to end up doing was pulling off the entire front bumper <sighs> that's the end up doing the towel on this one end up throwing off the, the pulling off the um, two headlights front bumper two headlights and just loosening up some stuff up front and I had left left this in left this intact everywhere that this crash bar connects to this I left that intact but what I had done though was loosen this up to right about the maximum that they could go so this this bolt this bolt this bolt these two bolts this bolt and any any other bolt loosens up right up to the maximum they could go so that I could slide this whole thing forward about let me let me do an S, a, a guess here yeah I would say about one whole inch forward so these would have been back here about here somewhere so just slide this whole thing for just an inch in an attempt to when I loosen this again be able to slide this straight up because I don't I do have two jack stands but getting the car up on the jack stand would still not be high enough to be able to slide it down also too can't slide it down because of this hard AC line that's going to be in the way of this piece here which I can't seem to get off without removing this whole thing from the vehicle so uh, I'm, gonna put, um, I'm gonna pause the camera again and then all I would then be doing is just simply unbolting this once more so that I have enough clearance to slide this out and we can be on the way to putting everything back together. All right, so I've finally gotten the intercooler, I mean not the intercooler, the radiator itself out as I had said before loosen this right up to the sorry loosen this right up to the very edge so I can pull slide this radiator support as far forward as I possibly could and then just took that out that way the reason why I did it this way is that I well normally the original factory method would have or the workshop manual would have had you pulling this whole thing off so that you just simply get access to it that way but because i had recently changed well years ago changed air conditioning condenser and had tightened up these two um this two, these two connectors here these two connectors i know can't ever pull ever again they are permanently like this when i tightened them up the the fit was extremely tight so there was no there's no, it can't pull this ever again it's going to be permanently like this it will fix properly as per factory specification but the cool um ac condenser bought was an aftermarket one so yeah the fit was really 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 tight don't want to have to pull that ever again so 
I'd have to keep this intact like so and I just removed it that way um, doing this though must forewarn you that you will put a little bit of strain on your intercooler like for me it was like right around here somewhere it had gently touched but didn't dented anything thank goodness yeah so it's obviously be cognizant of that when you're doing a job like this and you should be good so it's now so the new new AC um, radiators I mean new radiators in the box here uh, not genuine but or aka aftermarket um, but radiator is this with the two connectors had I removed the two connectors life would have been easier and I'd have been able to get the job done uh, much quicker but that this was not possible I couldn't get to this so getting this off now is going to be the real beer the real puzzle at that how am I gonna do this one I don't even know what don't worry involves a flathead screwdriver most likely well, nothing to it but to get to it all right so with intercooler being removed we we're looking at that the last time looking at no we were not looking at the last time so the two really two part bits that is that that there that and that um original radiator oem aftermarket I've taken these two fittings off, off of this, so put that on that. It's going to sort of be straightforward, but I would suggest using either some oil-based coolant to slide this over. There is a, might not show up well in video, but there's actually a rubber ring inside there that, thank goodness for me, it has not deteriorated. What it, the brown stuff that you're looking at is, boy part of some corrosion or some sort of chemical reaction between mixing coolants over the years and as such that is that but if you look closely there is actually a black ring so the black ring seals is what provides that seal you don't want to tear that although it looks almost impossible to do tear it so I'll be putting this on this like so ensure that when fitting it though this so this is the top of the radiator that's the base up down up down this would be on the vehicle's left side that will be on the vehicle's right side so this should be up so you can put the clip metal clip back on on top like so and then this should point down on this side so again you can actually affix the metal clip from this side not this side but this side all right, let's get to it. All right, so I did do, yes, yeah, so I did literally do um, <clears throat> tap, put these, transfer the connections from this to that, which I just simply lubricated it with some coolant, with oil-based coolant, that is. And as such, let me show you how, so this, these clips go back on like so you're supposed to keep this from sliding back out I'm going to show you how to put these in place okay. do this here it doesn't this is asymmetric so it don't matter which way it goes it'll flip in it to go always be in the right direction so you can either for this choose to hook it on one side all right so I've caught this in this groove here that's just one way to do it. You can do it whichever other way you find easier. And got that there. And as so as, as you push down, it will just automatically snap into place in one quick motion. So this is in its quote unquote ready state um, or some state. The moment you push down, yeah, snaps down into place. That's it. Zero force needed. So this won't slide off. 
ever again without you having to pull this up first um yeah so this so the back of this actually gets snap snaps into uh, trying to do this one-handed snaps into this groove so that groove the clip would straddle right in the middle there but you can't see that now that the clip is in place and that's what happens all right and the failure the crack point failure point 40 okay you can't see it now i took off the epoxy but there's a little slit that was right about here somewhere and it was just bubbling well as you can see this material was deteriorating anyway ah so it was a matter of time before it failed yeah so just to put this this shiny new thing back into the car and put everything back together and we're good to go so you may see this is literally the reverse of the process before where take this out i mean put this back in i'm gonna have to finish it now so it's not to scratch the intercooler I don't know if this is a fake part number or what, but that's definitely not. Oh yeah, but I'll Google it later. All right, let's go. All right, so we are. So I've now put. We are putting back together what came off. So the intercooler, intercooler, intercooler here, radiator here, intercooler up front, AC content the condenser up front. Intercooler in the middle, radiate at the back, and then we'll soon put on the fans. <coughs> oh, talking about fans. <coughs> oh, sneezing. Yeah. yeah, talking about fans, I have to swap the fan from this one to that unit from here to here. Uh, I know this. I know this works. I know that works. This is broken, so I'm not gonna use this. I know this works. That don't work. This is supposed to work. So put this to that and then be good. Alright, so we are nearing the end of well actually officially we had reached the we've no quote unquote reached the end of the process that you'd have wanted to see before. So what we have here now is the new radiator here, new radiator here, the, my old fan shrouding, old AC fan on that side. This is the replacement engine fan, which is in, and I've spun it up using the car's computer. The car's computer sends a signal. And both of these came on and they spun at a really good speed and they were balanced and so yeah it's just for me to fit this back to this and fit that back there um, yeah put this back in here I want to just put some coolant in this hole first since this is the highest point fill this with some coolant on that side so that there's some coolant in the system here there's no coolant clearly in this line as it's disconnected and drained out. So everything below this point where it, oh, yeah, everything below this point where it would have gone into um, the cylinder head is now dry officially. I, yeah, there is some sludge because, yeah, there is a sludge now because I had mixed coolant um, <clears throat> during the time at which this was yeah there is yeah see so i have mixed mixed coolant which i'm gonna have to do a coolant flush on fill in fill the coolant there drain that out there and then burp the system a couple of times then have the coolant and of course fill this as according accordingly 
put the front bumper back on after putting back headlights oh i have to bolt this back up as you may remember i said i unbolted this to give space to enough space for this the whole thing to come forward to get me enough space to get the radiator up and out of there and then i can bolt the headlights back to some acceptable level and put back on front bump and should be good oh also to reconnect the fog lights because fog lights are disconnected and the washer for the headlight washer yeah so yep where we go i'll be back all right so i've put the car back up together and as such what we do have so we do have the engine running The car has a timing issue. Timing issue and the tensioner. tensioner this tensioner pin keeps kicking against that. That's what we keep hearing. Um, also, yeah, so coolant is. Two coolant fans are running. at operating temperature yeah 10 26 p.m. here in, in Kingston Jamaica that's negative 5 GMT coolant temperature there operating temperature nice and nice and good looking in with the car on a dry surface no coolant leaks. These would have been from the previous um, pre previous coolant stuff over on that side. So on the expected two expected sources of coolant would have been here, down there, and also here. And we're good. And we're good. Here.
ground. That's a good sign. And this coolant here is from the previous spill that we actually did. Because, because what happened the actual we actually had a bonnet resting the front bumper rather resting inside this coolant stuff. So that's what's going on here. So we should be good. <laughs> 